Hello everyone, this is Wade from High Tech Legion. With over a thousand videos uploaded, if you haven't seen it here, you may not have seen it anywhere. In this video, I'm going to be giving you an overview of the UEFI BIOS, Click BIOS 2 from MSI with for the FM2 A85XMA-E35 micro ATX motherboard. This is using version 2.0 of the BIOS, so it has Richland support. Um, and as you can see from the interface, what we have here is a quick heads up display, which gives us a lot of pertinent information. Uh, the CPU temperature and main board temperature, our time, date, the version of the BIOS we're running, as well as our chip, uh, our frequency that the CPU or APU is running at in this case, the DRAM frequency, and the memory size. You also have boot device priority that you can set. Uh, you can drag these around, just click and drag them, and for some quick moving around of boot device priority, um, you also have, or for Windows 8 you need to leave this usually to UEFI Windows Boot Manager. Uh, you also have three buttons here for Eco Mode, which is a power saving mode, Standard Mode, and OC Genie Mode, which will automatically overclock your CPU and memory for uh, the best system performance. If you're not into uh, overclocking your own system, the OC Genie 2 is a great way to give you a stable performance boost. Over on the right here, you've got three buttons. One is for a browser for internet, messaging, and mail. This does require a application be installed on the Windows system to work. You also have utilities for your hard disk backup, a live update utility, and mFlash. mFlash is a BIOS update system. Um, you can also what this really is used for is backing up your BIOS settings to a USB stick and re restoring those settings back to the system. You are not able to make major jumps uh, with the, using the mFlash utility. So going from version 1.7 to version 2 is not possible using the mFlash. You have to put a Trinity chip into the board in order to update using Windows or DOS. Under password security you can set an administrator password and configure the chassis intrusion. intrusion. Uh, and also you can make a USB stick uh, for security purposes as well with this. On the left side you've got your settings button uh, which gives you the options for system status gives you just a quick overview of what's in the, in the system, uh, your time and date, this is where you would set your time and date, and also um, the SATA, what's connected to the SATA ports, your CPU information, and BIOS version, and memory size, cache size as well. Under the OC tab, this is where the magic really happens if you're going to be adjusting your um, clocks manually. You've got a lot of uh, settings here specifically for the CPU base frequency or BCLK and uh, the CPU ratio which if we click on that we get a menu that pops up and we're able to clock your processor here. Uh, in this case we put it up to 4.8 gigahertz and with an APU overclocking is a little bit different so you have to adjust the um, or sorry you can adjust the north bridge ratio um, you also have your core control which allows you to set um, different uh, cores to work the AMD turbo core technology if you're overclocking usually you want this disabled so that you don't end up getting a static frequency. This is your GPU engine, so this is for the built-in GPU um, in the APU that's um, installed into this processor. 
So you can adjust the megahertz for that and your DDR3 frequency here. Uh, you can push and as well as having support for XMP profiles. In this case, we set the XMP profile to enable and it set our memory to what it's supposed to be at 2133 megahertz, the timings and 1.5 volts. Under the next section here, um, you can change the CPU voltage to allow for overclocking and you also with the APU typically have to adjust the CPU north bridge voltage uh, in order to get a stable clock. You also have your D, uh, DRAM voltage which in this case is controlled by the CPU north bridge. Your south bridge voltage again it's built into the chip and spread spectrum. The retry count on how many times the motherboard tries to retry the overclock before it will revert back to default settings. Under overclocking profiles you have six profiles that you can save. Um, you can also save them and load them from a USB stick. You've got your back button here to go back to the previous menu. Under CPU specifications, you have more detailed information on the CPU specifications as well as the extensions that are supported. Memory Z gives you options for that uh, for your memory. It gives you a lot more information on the memory and the current settings for each DIMM. And you have under CPU features the AMD Cool and Quiet technology, SVM mode, and C6 sleep state mode, whether you can enable or disable those options. Under Eco, there isn't really too much to change here. Uh, you can set the EUP 2013 to enable or disable, and that's it. And you also get a little quick PC health status view. Also with this you can press F12 to take a screenshot of settings. Uh, you have a help function which gives you information for the screen that you're in. Um, you have a hotkey button that will tell you what your hotkeys are. In particular the one you're going to want to remember is F10 to save and restart the system when you uh, make changes to your settings. You can also click on the X up here to do the same thing and if you've made changes it will prompt you to save those settings. Other options under settings include the advanced screen which gives us options for our PCI subsystem, our ACPI standby modes and whether our power LED is um, on options for our integrated peripherals so we can change the set of mode here. Um, this does default to AHCI which is good considering that most of the drives support that and you have your onboard LAN which you can turn on or off. You have your integrated graphics controller which will um, give you the options to change the um, which graphics driver, which graphics device is primary. USB configuration, your COM port and parallel port that are on the board configuration, a quick hardware monitor with some PC health status and some fan settings, specifically Windows 8 configuration. Um, if you enable the fast boots, you may not be able to get back into the BIOS very easily. And more settings for power, EUP 2013, and whether the system comes back on after a power failure or um, stays off or whatever the last state it was in. So if it was off, it would stay off. If it was on, it would stay, it would come back on. 
you also have your weight event configuration, so um, which types of things cause the system to wake up if it's in a sleep state. Under boot, you have more options for your um, boot devices, and you can move these, uh, change the uh, boot order, as well as which, pro which uh, devices have priorities. Of course, you have your save and exit button as well here, uh, which gives you the option to discard changes and exit, save changes and reboot, just save the changes or discard the changes, restore defaults, and change the boot override for um, if you want to skip the boot order. This has been an overview of the MSI FM2-885XMA-E35 motherboard, micro ATX motherboard. I hope you enjoyed this video and for the full review please see www.hitechlegion.com Also don't forget to check out our video on the overview of the motherboard itself which will also be posted on YouTube and in the review. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Facebook as well as our Twitter accounts. Take care.